Hey everyone, welcome to today's video. You are here on the Gaming Daddy channel where we talk about happenings in the gaming industry and this and all that good stuff. So today we're going to jump into the video and talk about the biggest news that the gaming scene has heard in the past few years. And that is the coming Half-Life Alyx game that's going to be here March 2020. Now, the reason I say this is probably one of the biggest news that the gaming scene has actually had in the last few years is because even for somebody like me that has never played Half-Life, I have probably seen memes upon memes upon comments upon comments upon subreddits upon subreddits on how people are wishing that Steam will make another Half-Life game. And if you have never heard anybody mention Half-Life and you are a gamer, then you've been gaming under a rock. Because this news, even when I told a colleague of mine today who's also a gamer that they had had, had a Half-Life announcement, he told me that I was lying to him. He had no belief. He said, you're setting me up for a bad joke. And he pulled out his phone and he checked it and it was actually true. And it's also a VR game. So for those who are the progenitors or pioneers or early adopters of the VR system, they do have something to look forward to. Now, here are a few details about this game in terms of what it's going to look like and what we're going to be seeing when the game finally is released. So first things first, if you've never played Half-Life before, then you're probably not going to care about a lot of what we're going to be talking about here. But nonetheless, I think there's something really critical about all of this. So first of all, let's get it out of the way. The Half-Life system and the Half-Life game is going to be on Steam's VR. If you look here on the Steam page, there is a short announcement that says notice requires a virtual reality headset. See the VR support section for more info. So I'm thinking this probably uses the Steam VR and maybe other VRs that are compatible with your PC. But nonetheless, I see where Valve is going with this. They're trying to push out as many units of this VR system, and it only makes sense that they bring some of their loved and most beloved games that gamers have been asking for. Not only is the pushing out of Steam uh, VR headsets the main reason for us seeing this Half-Life game, I think 2020 is the year where gaming developers are going to now start listening and actually delivering what the gaming community wants. You can see this trend starting to happen, and those who are not delivering, they're being left behind. Like Diablo 4, look at the way they started the marketing of that game. They're trying to appeal to the old and good old Diablo community, those who bought those $2,000, $3,000 rigs who heard about cell phones when they went for that Diablo event a few years ago. And then if you do a full circle, you're going to be able to find your way back to EA and how they eventually flipped their entire script on themselves when earlier, a few years ago, they said that players do not want single player games, hence their cancellation of many Star Wars single player projects. Only at the end of 2020, they release a single player Star Wars game, exactly what they had said that they did not feel players want. And then you start seeing the new gaming services like Xbox's Game Pass, the xCloud being promised, Sony's um, PlayStation Now being reduced in price, and the whole gaming scene in terms of manufacturers, platforms, developers, everybody is vying for everybody's pockets and everybody else's attention. And so right now you are seeing a transformation in the gaming industry because for the past few years, it had been microtransactions and all the other things it had been uh, exclusives on platforms like Epic Games, but what you're seeing right now is a huge change where everybody is now wanting to appeal to their core community. And this is something that I've said a long time ago. The way you sell video games is you sell it to your community, your pr already existing community. That is how you succeed. You respect that community. You give them what it is that they want, what it is that they've been requesting within your own, uh, you know, available reach anyways. And then you make sure that they are happy. You do those things and you will continue to be successful in today's very, very crowded gaming scene. And there's nothing wrong with the competition. I feel like as gamers, we welcome all of it. We see Google Stadia actually, you know, drop in just the past few days, having a, a little bit of a rough start, but also having some early adopters as well. 
And I think Google Stadia is actually, its platform is actually going to be competitive once it gets its feet and starts to, you know, right now it's in a crawling phase, but once it actually starts to walk and run, it's going to take off very well for a lot of gamers. But nonetheless, what you also see is the other services are also going to be vying for your wallet and for your attention. So if you're on the Sony side or the Xbox side or even on the PC side, you're about to see some really quality products come out. AAA companies are going to be making games that that the community and the whole uh, plethora of gamers actually want. And we're already seeing it right now. And then to top it off, CD Projekt Red already has a loyal fan base. And this, I think, scares a lot of developers. A lot of developers are shaking in their boots because Cyberpunk 2077 is going to be a massive explosive game when it releases. So Half-Life Alyx in my opinion, I think is the birth child of a gaming industry that needed to go through the fire in us for in order for us as gamers to be able to get the best possible deal in terms of everything going on. Those who put themselves on the microtransaction route, broken game release route, they are going to answer for all those actions that they actually put out in the past. Now, I do have a lot of positive comments about EA's new game, Star Wars Jedi Fallen Order, but I don't really give a lot of the credit to EA. I give the credit to the development company behind this game, which is Respawn Entertainment. And I have heard some concerns from a lot of my subscribers saying, but this is an EA game. How can you continue to support this company? I have to look at it this way. EA hires people to do the job, but their leadership is very poor. I mean, we saw Battlefield 5 where one of their leaders had to actually leave the company because he spoke down to his customers. So what you see is the leadership has a core in the sense that they have no respect for their players. But nonetheless, the development teams on the other small studios who have all been the people that have been under the radar are going to now start coming into the limelight because they do respect their players. They do respect what their players are about and want to give their players what they want. I mean, they tried it with Bioware where they allow Bioware to just ship out games based on greed and based on terrible deadlines. And Andromeda was a flop out the door and Anthem was also a flop out the door. So I don't think they can risk that kind of thing. And so I feel like Respawn needs to be getting the affirmation that it needs so that EA can stare clear of its bad practices. That is exactly what we need. EA never will get any credit from me unless they take 10 years to change their ways, which if they're not going to change it, then they might as well continue to be the terrible company out there. But nonetheless, we have to look at things and be able to dissect the issue and say, okay, there are development studios and then there are publishers and publisher mandates. And if you look at it from that, from that perspective, you're going to see that you can still give Respawn Entertainment everything that they're due. Because these guys have actually come from a lot of stress. Think about 2016, 2017, when Titanfall uh, 2 was released in between Call of Duty and Battlefield 5 because EA wanted to go out there and compete. And so threw all these games out in order for them to compete against Activision, thereby hurting Titanfall 2. It was Vin Zampla, the president and the, the, the leader of Respawn, that actually was at the back end of this entire fiasco because his game did not necessarily do so well and you can see that that team actually had gamers at heart they had free dlc they had all this stuff that was a wonderful package but because of all the noise and ea's bad decision making in terms of their greed they threw them under the bus so that is exactly the perspective that i'm coming from i know this is a half-life video but i still have to make sure that i put that out here so that you guys can actually see where my perspective is coming from. It's a very, very fine line to walk, but honestly, everybody knows how I feel about EA and everybody knows how I feel about Respawn. They just happen to find themselves in that situation. Now, if Respawn Studio can one day break away from EA like Bungie broke away from Activision, I feel like they will most likely be very, very well celebrated by the gaming community. But for now, they have to use the vehicle that they have, and that is EA. And hopefully, EA's leadership can change its actions or, you know, shareholders and people who have influence can see that the direction that they've been going is not the way they need to go. And if the leadership is not willing to steer the ship into better waters, instead of putting it in turbulent waters, then they need to they need to go. And they need people who actually care about gamers to come in there and do the job. Nonetheless, I think this is a wonderful development. I think Half-Life Alyx 
just happens to be that statement that now games are actually about to get better. This announcement probably shook the foundations of everything that all these different people have been trying to do to try to boycott Steam because this game is definitely going to be a Steam exclusive. And those good old Half-Life people, Half-Life players, they are going to come and support this game if it's a good game. Some people may not be fans of the VR system, but I think largely because of the huge demand for a game like this, a lot of people are going to rally together and actually play and support this game. And if they continue, if they continue to do this, if Steam continues to go into game development again, Valve, I mean, I said Steam, if Valve continues to go into game development again and start to do its own thing where it has that core community, has the integration, it has the platform, it has its own fan base, it's definitely going to be successful. And Epic Games needs to now understand that the reality will dawn on them because their own business model has now become something of a joke because a lot of the exclusives that they talk about are not necessarily exclusives because once Microsoft gets their hands on them, they come to PC most of the time. So this is a very interesting thing to watch. And I'm really excited about what's going on. And I know a lot of people are still kind of weary, but the way I see it, You'll probably see it, you know, once a lot of these pieces start coming together. But I spend my days driving down the road thinking about stuff like this. So I expect to kind of, you know, look at things and present them to everybody else from my perspective. And I do expect that some people might not see reason with me. But nonetheless, if I'm wrong at the end of the day, that's also fine. I'm happy to be corrected because I want to be accurate and I want to be right at the end of the day. So I appreciate you guys so much for listening to this video and watching the video. Thank you once again for your time and your audience, and I guess I'll see you in the next video. Peace.